Okay, hello everyone. Today we'll have the DICT ICT proficiency examination uh review for your um upcoming examination this uh, month. So one of the topics that will be covered under this review is we have the program simulation. Now for the topics covered under this program simulation, we'll have uh, conditional statements. So just a recap of what these statements are, starting with the if statement, if else statement, the else if, and the switch statement. Also, we'll be discussing iterations or the different iterations available on um, Java programming language. So, by the way, um, within this uh, discussion, we'll be using uh, Java programming language. So, we'll be discussing the for loop, while loop, do while, and the for each loop. Now, let's start first with conditional statements. So, conditional statements, specifically in Java, uh, these are used to control the flow, of course, of our execution in a program based on a certain uh, condition. So these statements allow us to execute different blocks of code depending whether the condition evaluates to be true or false. Now let's start with the most common one, which is the if statement. So the if statement is used to execute a block of code only if the condition is set to true. Now we have here the syntax, so if condition, and then within uh, our braces, we have the implementation, if ever the condition turned to true. So for example, we have here an integer x is equal to 10. So if our x is greater than five, then we'll have this output that x is greater than five. So we know that x is equal to 10, where 10 is greater than 5. So meaning the condition will be true. So that means our output x is greater than 5 will be displayed. Now let us have the if-else statement. So earlier we have encountered handling a condition that is true. Now here on if-else, it allows us to execute one block of code if the condition is true and another block of code if the condition is false. So for our syntax, that is if condition, and then our statements if the condition is true, and then else, and then our statements if the condition is false. Now let us have these example. Let's say we have the variable y, which is equal to 3, and then we have our condition under our if, if y modulus 2 is equal to 0. Modulo uh, is the remainder. The result of modulo is the remainder of the division. So y modulo 2 or 3 modulo 2 is 1. So is 1 equal to 0? So the answer is no. So that means our condition is false. So once our condition turned uh, false, we'll automatically proceed at the else statement. So meaning we do not get the output y is even, else we'll get the output y is odd. Now let us have the else if statement. So on the else if, it allows us to test multiple conditions one by one and execute the block of code corresponding to the first true condition. So let's say for example, if our first condition. If our first condition is false, then we'll proceed to the else if. The first else if, then our condition if that um, uh, set to false again, we'll proceed to another else if. If we have another else if, if our uh, conditions were all set to false, then we'll fall on the else statement. Let's say, for example, we have here grade, an integer uh, grade equal to 75. So our first condition is, if grade is greater than or equal to 90, to which, if we check, is 75 greater 
than or equal to 90. So it's not. So it's a false condition. So that means we'll not get an output of A. Also, that also means we need to proceed to the next condition. Our next condition is within our first else if. So we'll fall on the condition grade is greater than or equal to 80. If we check is, is 75 greater or equal to 80. So it's not. So this is another false condition. So meaning we will not get the output B. Now let's proceed to the second else if. Our third condition is if grade is greater than or equal to 70. So on this case, 75 is greater than 70. So that means we will fall on this condition. So we'll be expecting an output of C. So here's one thing on using um, multiple conditions. Once we fall on one of the conditions, that's it for the execution. We'll no longer proceed with other else ifs or even the else statement if we have uh, or if we fall already in one of our conditions. And last, of course, we have the switch statement. Uh, the switch statement allows us to perform different actions based on different possible values of our expression. So for our synx, so that will be switch and then our expression. And then switch statement uses different cases. So let's say, for example, our first value that we wanted to compare. So that will be case and then that specific value. And then our uh, corresponding statements. Uh, one thing there is is to not forget to add break statement on our cases. At the end of each case, we need to provide a break. Okay, because a uh, case is just um, uh, allows us to provide a name on our um, switching. So that means we need to provide a break so that the execution of that case will be terminated. So let's say, for example, on this one, if we fail to provide a break under case one, so automatically, automatically we'll just proceed on the case two. Okay, and then we have the default. Default is our um, block if none of the cases are true or if there are uh, no matches on any of our cases available, then we'll have the default. Well, let's have an example. Let's say, for example, we have here our integer variable day, which is equal to four. So let's say we have here switch and then our variable day. Then we have here cases. Based on the pattern, we are um, dealing with the days of the week. So Sunday, Monday is two. So chances are Tuesday is three, Wednesday is four, and so on. So we we could expect that our output is Wednesday because based on the pattern, that will be the number four. Let's say we change day to um, eight. We know that the days of the week is only seven. So meaning will fall under the default block which prints an invalid day. Now let's proceed with the iterations. So iterations are used to execute a block of code repeatedly until we met a certain condition. So in Java, there are several types of loops that we can utilize. We have the for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop. We also have the for each or the enhanced for loop. Let's start with the for loop um, iteration. So the for loop is used when you know the number of times you want to execute a block of code. So syntax, we have the keyword for, and then we have our initialization condition and the update or the afterthought. By the way, these three are all optional when it comes to for loop. Okay, and then within our um, implementation, we have here the statements or the block of code that we wanted to execute upon uh, the condition. Okay, once, I'm sorry, once the condition is still true. 
Okay, for example, we have here four integer i is equal to one, where i is less than or equal to five, and then we have here the i plus plus. So by the way, the uh, execution of a for loop is we start with our initialization. So we have your int i is equal to one. And then we check the condition. Is i less than or equal to five? In our case, the condition is true. That means we'll proceed within the statements within our for loop. So we have your count, a, a string count. And then uh, concatenation, we have here the value of i. So this would be one. So count one. And then we'll proceed with our afterthought. So this is an incremental value of i plus 1. So i plus plus means i plus 1. <clears throat> so that means i will now be changed to 2. So is 2 less than 5? True. So we'll still continue up until we reach the condition to false. Once our condition set to false, we'll now terminate the iteration. Now let's proceed with the while loop. So the while loop is used when you want to execute a block of code as long as a condition is true. So the syntax of while loop is we have the while keyword and then our corresponding condition. So let's say, for example, we wanted to convert the earlier code on the for loop using the while loop. So here we will do the initialization outside of the loop. And then the printing uh, will be within the while loop. And then our incrementation will also be within our while loop. So the output would be the same of our for loop. Now let's proceed with the do while loop. On our do while loop, uh, this is similar to the while loop. But we are guaranteed that there will be one execution of our code block before it reads our condition. So the syntax of do while is we have the do and then our statements, and then we have the while and then our condition. As you could see, based on its structure, the condition is uh, <clears throat> located below. So that means uh, anything within the do will be executed first and then we'll ask if the condition is true. <clears throat> So converting again the same um, example that we had on the for loop. So we will do the initialization first within our um, uh, or sorry, outside of our do while loop. And then we print and then we increment and then we ask if the condition is true. And then this will be set to two and then we iterate over again. Then it will increment to three, and then iterate to four, iterate then to five, iterate, and then once this has been changed to six, so this no longer satisfies our condition, then we'll terminate the loop. Then we have the enhanced for loop, or what we call the for each loop. <clears throat> so this enhanced for loop, also known as, as I mentioned, this is the for each loop provides a simplified way to iterate over elements, specifically on arrays and or collections. So it is useful when you want to iterate over all elements in a specified collection without the need to keep track of an index. Okay, Because on utilizing the traditional for a loop with um, initialization condition and afterthought, um, we can iterate over an element or sorry, we can iterate on the elements of a collection through its index. Now, this one will be directing to the value of collection. So the syntax for the for each loop is we have the keyword for, and then our data type, and then our variable that will represent the element, and then colon, and then we have our collection or array and then our statements within the implementation. Now, for the example, let's say we have here an array of numbers with the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have here the sum, which is currently equal to 0. So basically, we just wanted to get the sum of all the numbers within our array. 
So we have our for loop and then our data type int for the num variable, which will hold again the elements of our numbers array ev r per iteration. Okay, so then we'll just increment sum with the current value of num. So we'll be printing the sum of all elements. So whatever the result of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and plus 5, that will be our result. So that will be all. If you have further questions, you can reach me at erinpaul.delarosa at bolso.endo.ph or you can reach me as well through my Facebook account, paul.erin3243.